Hello, this is Patsy's Porch Light. I'm here, it's getting late, but I just want to give out a word, but I'm rather in a snip right now. I could just take this computer and just throw it in the road, but not that I'm going to. It's just I had everything all said the way I wanted to say, and wouldn't you know it, the whole flipping computer shut down and I lost it. So now here I am again. This is Patsy's Porch Light taking this word to a dark world. Let's start all over from scratch. So anyways, my son came down and I was in a snit and it's like, oh. But anyways, it's not life and death. Life goes on. I won't wreck my computer. I'm not that way. It's just when you had it all said the way you want to say it and then boom. So what was I talking about? Well, I was talking about Samuel. First Samuel and how Hannah was grieved because of not having any babies. It said her husband always gave her a double portion because he loved her so much even though she didn't have a child. So she was taunted and vexed and it said she was deeply hurt. So then she made a vow to God and she, it said it took some time. It didn't just happen overnight but she received her little baby boy Samuel and she gave him back to God when he was three years old and took him to the temple or the tabernacle which was in Shiloh so um so then she went up every year made him a little robe and you know seeing the little darling in a little robe at three four five years old so anyways he loved you know grew up with the Lord. But what happened was Eli's sons, Hophni and Phinehas, were wicked, wicked helpers to their daddy. They just, and, and Eli did not uh, rebuke them for their dastardly deeds. And what were their dastardly deeds? Well, one of them was that when the women would come up to seek to worship their God, their Hophni and Phinehas was taken and these women and uh, polluting them, uh, lying with them. Um, and, and this is what's happening. You know, they're taking the women who have a heart to want to serve God, but they were like predators. And the women in the community were at their mercies. So God saw this all. Why? Because his presence was in the ark. The ark of the covenant was there. And we see that God's presence dwelled even with this damnable actions that were going on. Plus, Hophni and Phinehas were eating the fat and they would poke their fork into the meat and whatever meat was on, they ate it. And they did not uh, have respect for God's um sacrifices and you weren't to you were not to eat the fat but they did so God was wroth with them and right here it says here's what happened to them it says here here's the curse um, that said look the days are coming when I will cut off your strength and the strength of your ancestral family so that none of your family will reach old age. You will see distress in the place of worship. It said, in spite of all that is good in Israel, and no one in your family will ever again reach old age. Any man from your family I do not cut off from my altar will bring grief and sadness to you. All your descendants will die violently. This will be the sign that will come to you concerning your two sons, Hophni and Phinehas. Both of them will die on the same day. Now, look where it says here, you will see distress in the place of worship. Now, how does that pertain to today? And I always like looking at stories and say, is there a lesson for us today? There are many, many houses of churches, I should say churches, um, 
and not all. I'm not talking about every single one of them, but I'm talking the a, a majority of them. Their worship. Many, many are sitting in the churches, defiling the women, defiling the men. You see the women coming in like temple prostitutes with their, um, you know, immodest ways and their clothing. And then you see the men. I mean, oh my goodness. And and instead of worship, you have distress. And then they were dying uh, premature deaths, which is a curse. So I knew of a lady that her um, and her men and her family were dying at 45. And that that's, I told her, you're, it's a curse. It's a curse that, that that's happening. So um, we need to pray and, and, and ask God why. And, and it said forever and ever. I mean, it didn't say there'd be no children. It just said they would not reach old age and that and when they did die, it would be violent. So anyways, because of this sin and God's presence was right there in the ark and it's, they had no fear and they thought God's silence meant that they could do whatever they want, but it caught up with them. It caught up with them and guess what happened? They had to go out to battle and this is all found in 1 Samuel. So start reading and very interesting of what I'm going to talk about next. But they went out to battle and with the Philistines, which you got to remember that that's who Goliath is, is from the Philistines. They were Nephilim. So um, that's what uh, Goliath was and his brothers. So it says here that uh, they went out. Um, uh, they went out and uh, that says Israel went out to meet the Philistines this is 1 Samuel 4 and camped at Ebenezer while the Philistines camped at Aphek you know the Philistines were all lined up ready to go and it said here <clears throat> while the troops returned to camp um, you know they were defeated in one battle, but they came back together. <clears throat> and they're wondering, why are we being defeated? And it's because there's sin. There's iniquity within the, the temple. There's such iniquity that it was the start of their downfall. So what happened? It said that they went out. And it says, um, So the people sent men to Shiloh to bring back the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord of Hosts. Oh, wait, excuse me. I'm sorry, I skipped a page here. What happened was um, the ark was captured, okay? And what I'm trying to really get at is that um, we're crying out for God's presence, okay, dear ones? We're crying out, give us your presence, give us your presence. Look what happens when the Philistines got the ark. They captured the ark. You know, it says here that the the Israelites put up quite a fight. It says here that the Israelites raised such a loud shout that the ground shook. And you can probably, you know, agree with that when you sit in a football game in a big stadium. The noise is so loud. I'm sure the ground is shaking. When you've got that many people screaming and yelling, it shook the ground. And so what happened was the ark was captured and Eli's two sons, Hophni and Phinehas, died. Okay? So the presence, uh, God was not pleased with them. So when God's not pleased with you and you're crying out for his presence, guess what's going to happen? A lot of bad things are going to start happening. Look at the curses upon Hophni and Phinehas' family. So then it said, that Phineas's wife found out because what had Eli fell off his throne and broke his neck because he was nice and plump and heavy, probably from eating all the fat of what he wasn't supposed to eat. And his disobedience of allowing his children to be hell raisers and so and to defile the tabernacle. So Phineas's wife. This didn't just affect uh, 
see, the sins that we commit have ramifications. So Phineas' wife heard of, e well, first it said she heard that the ark was captured. That was a big deal. Then she found out Eli fell and broke his neck. She found out her son, or her son, her husband Phineas died and her brother-in-law died. And it caused her to go into labor, gave birth to a baby and call, and she ended up croaking. And so then it's, uh, uh, she named the baby Ichabod, which meant the glory of the Lord has departed. And then she died. So then the Philistines got the ark. And where did they go and take the ark? They took it and they put it in the same room as Dagon, their fish god. And have you ever noticed in the Vatican and all around the Catholics that wear those big hats that kind of, you know, are like this? Those, that's a Dagon, that's a fish hat. So that's where they get this from. So when you are uh, really steeped into the cat Catholicism, that, that's Dagon worship. So Constantine, long time ago, caused um, all the holidays that we have today. And that's how a lot of our churches are. Uh, are doing what they're doing and a lot of their beliefs because of Constantine. He caused um, that the church would not be persecuted anymore. And we looked at that and we thought, that's a good thing. No, because what happened is he's the one that set up these little concentration internment camps of teaching for all the little churches. They used to meet in church houses or in each other's houses. Now Constantine, to stop all persecution, he put denominations and then boom, but boom, we got what we got today. Because then it's easier to control when you're in a building. It's almost like one of these FEMA camps, glorified FEMA camps, all throughout the world, all the church building with their phallic symbols. And you know, the steeples on top, that's phallic symbol. And we have Constantine to thank for our modern day religion. So the Dagon, what happened when they, uh, you know, the, the, uh, it fell down when they came in the next day, it fell down, uh, because Dagon fell down in front of the ark, God's presence. God allowed his presence to be in the presence of false worship. Okay, so then what happened? They came back the next morning and here the head fell off, the hands fell off, and guess what happened? In this Philistine place, they got tumors. They got sick, big growths, malign malignant. You wonder if a lot of sicknesses that are coming within our churches is because of false worship. We're, we're crying for God's presence, dear ones. We're crying and crying. Oh, I've been in the churches. In your presence, that's where I belong. In your presence, but yet you still have your sin. You're still defiling your bodies. You're still abusing your spouses. You're molesting your children. You're your drug addicts, drinkers, pornographies, all of that junk, and yet you sit on Sunday crying out for God's presence, and you're mixing the holy with the profane, and that's what they were doing, okay? And they realized that we don't want God's presence. It is better to go and not have God's presence at all. That's God even gave them it said gave them that, you know, they can, they can not uh, uh, have God's presence. In fact, he doesn't want his presence in idolatry. Yet we cry out every day. I got to have my money. Got to have my money. Got to have my possessions. I got to have my homes. I got to have, got to have, got to have. Yet we cry out to God for God's presence. These people had at least enough brains to load up the ark, okay, and headed on down the road. 
They didn't want it anymore. At least us, we sit here and we're getting tumors right and left, cancers, we're sicker than dogs, and we're just as jacked up as what the world is. There's no difference. It's because we have brought in Dagon into our worship. We have. Because when we're based on Catholicism in our churches, then that was Dagon worship. Then we wonder why there's so many sick within our churches and dying. And that's what it says when we take communion. It said that's why many are sick and, and sleep. Because they are taking communion unworthily. And every time you go up there and you think that uh, uh, some person ahead of an organization and you look at them as almost like God, you are in deep trouble. It's better that you just be in the world and not even be around religion because you're mixing the holy with the profane. So what happened was they, um, um, the Lord's hand was against the city of Gath, causing a great panic. See, the ark was going from place to place. Gath, that's where Goliath was from. So God's presence moved to these places that were Nephilim. And the Nephilim were getting tumors and getting sick and panicked and panic attacks. And then it says the Gittites then sent the ark to Ekron. But when it got there, the Ekronites cried out. They moved the ark of Israel's God to kill us and our people. See, it caused quite a stink amongst all the... They at least knew and had the brains to know, get that thing out of here. Get it out of here. We want our foreign gods. And what's happening, God said, be either hot or cold. Don't do this lukewarm crap. Or I'm going to spew you out because you are filled with tumors and cancers and sicknesses that are, that are, I'm not saying every cancer and every sickness is, you know, from God or <clears throat> heavy hand of judgment from God. But what I'm saying, when we are mixing the holy with the pollute or with the profane and polluted, you don't know what you're going to get. Back then, at least, they understood what the presence of God was all about. Now, not, very few fear God. And then they wonder why they're not healed. They wonder, why is my family this? Or why is my family that? Or why is this not working out? Well, you better figure out if you're mixing a little holy with the profane. It says, when the ark of the Lord had been in the land of the Philistines for seven months, the Philistines summoned the priests and the diviners and pleaded, what should we do with the ark of the Lord? See, they even called it the ark of the Lord. How do we get the Lord's presence out of here? So what did they have them do? Tell us how we can send it back. It said, and then these diviners said, if you send the ark of Israel's God away, you must not send it without an offering. You must send back a restitution offering to him and you will be healed. Then the reason his hand hasn't been removed from you will be revealed. Okay? So, I mean, they even knew how to make it right. They know. See, we should never mess with God's presence. If you're not serious with him, dear ones, then walk away from God. Just get away from him. Because if you're in a church service, I've been there. Your presence, your presence. And what's happening? People were croaking right and left and horrible things happening. So that's because our hearts aren't right and totally devoted. At least these people tried figuring out. So they had to make gold tumors and gold mice out of gold. And this is in uh, 1 Samuel 6. And then they put them in the cart right beside the presence of God. These were idols of tumors and idols of mice. 
okay? And, he, and then they had to take two cows, milking cows, that's never been hitched up before, wild milking cows that just had baby calves. And they took these cows and the and and they probably were quite heavy because the calves were taken away in the, in in the milking produce production area and I bet you they were hurting and it said that they were mooing all the way the word isn't mooing but they were in distress and uh, they sent it away and guess what happened God's hand led those cows that never pulled a never pulled a wagon before cart but God's hand was on it and they were sending it back to Israel and guess what happened so then the these uh son the victory at Mizpah and all of a sudden um the Israelites received uh the ark and it says, as a restitution offering to the Lord, the Philistines had sent back one gold tumor for each city. The number of gold mice also corresponded to the number of Philistine cities. And it says, uh, and what, you know, there's just, you have to read this. It's quite interesting. But it says, God struck down the men of Beth Shemesh because they looked inside of the ark. They lifted off like Indiana Jones kind of thing, struck them dead. They did not respect the Lord's presence. They were not holy. They were not Levi, the priests, or anything. And it said 70 men out of 70 or 50,000. The people mourned because the Lord struck them with a great slaughter. The men of Beth Shemesh asked, Who is able to stand in the presence of his holy of this holy Lord God. Who should the ark go to from here? And so the men of Kir, whatever, it sounds like I'd be speaking in tongues if I pronounced it, came for the ark of the Lord and took it to Abinadab's house on the hill. They consecrated his son Eleazar to take care of it. And so then Samuel said, it's a time went by until 20 years had passed since the ark had been taken to this Kiriath, Jehorim, whatever. Then the whole house of Israel began to seek the Lord. And Samuel said, get rid of your foreign gods. This is what's happening, dear ones. We're not getting rid of our idolatry, yet we want the presence of God. Can you understand why you're going through hell right now? You're mixing the holy with the profane. You're trying to look into the presence of God with a heart of uh, deceit and wickedness and bitterness and all these evil things. You're not totally consecrated to Lord God Almighty. And I'm telling you, there, there's restitution offerings. Yeah, we don't make gold tumors and gold mice. They did. And, and I'm sure the tumors is because that's what they, they thought it's probably something, you know, uh, uh, you know, to worship or something. They made idols of tumors, it said. Idols of mice. Mice are you know, destructive. They come in and destroy and eat and they have diseases and they thought this is what restitution. Now, isn't that quite the restitution? But we should have restitution when we, like, I remember a young man I talked to and he said, you know, when I come to the Lord, I knew I should do restitution. He said, it's one thing that you steal something and then you get saved and you just forget about it, blah, blah, blah. He said, we need to start getting into restitution. He said, I would go to Walmart. He said, I stole the TV. So what did I do? I went to Walmart and I bought a TV, set it on the counter, paid for it, and then I walked out without the TV. He said, because I had to give back a restitution. And that's where, you know, we may have to uh, just think about that word restitution. So anyways, what I wanted to just tell is that 
Uh, we're sitting in our church. It's under the guise of Dagon. And you say, oh, that's harsh. But let me tell you, that is how a lot of our um, church is going. See, we thought, Constantine thought he was doing a good thing by not letting the church be persecuted anymore. But it was the persecution that causes the church to grow. Look at China. Look at how fast the underground church. You know, the blood of the martyrs is the seed of the church. And, you know, we think, oh my goodness, we, we're all in safety here in our churches. No, Constantine knew the enemy used Constantine, Constantine, that if you put each person in a church building and put rules and regulations, then you're easily controlled. Well, it's time we get out of this Constantine era. Because after him became the Dark Ages then. And it, it just is seems like it's gone downhill since. But there are some very good churches that are wanting the power of God. But I think myself in these end days is going to heat up to where uh, persecution and we will have to meet in our homes. And but you know what do I know I'm just some hip girl in my small country town but I, I'm going to tell you that don't mix God's presence with your idols because I'm going to tell you you're going to be on the losing end so this is Patsy's porch light taking this word to a hurting and dark world and it's getting late here and I'm going to upload it but let me tell you, you are loved, but don't compromise. Don't compromise. If you're going to want God's presence, you better totally want it. Put away your idols or you're going to get sick. You're going to face terrible things in your life. If your things aren't working out the way you want, you'd better check. Are you mixing the holy with the profane? So have a great day. We need our Samuels, Ezekiels. And we need our Micahs, our Hoseas. We need these prophets today to Elijah's, to come up, Elisha's, to, to speak these words in boldness. In Jesus' name, have a great night. Good night, my precious ones. I, I love you and God loves you. Good night.